JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JD Traders Espresso with me, Titus on Charles, today is the 20th of January 2022. So yep, welcome everyone, welcome to this recorded session, um, Thursday's recording session of course. Um, but yeah, as always we'll have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff, basically what we do here. Um, and uh, yeah, but uh, before we jump in and into all that, um, uh, let's quickly have a read through our uh, risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump into the charts, a uh, quick um, mentioning um, of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD research page, which is also updated on a daily basis, so yep, check us out here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So now then let's jump into the charts and uh, I do have a few of these today so I'll try to quickly fry, fly, uh, uh, fly through them um, because like I said I need to kind of fit into my hours as well but um, uh, in minutes uh, but uh, yeah for now um, looking at this picture here and Nikkei managed to uh, jump back up nicely here after reaching the lowest point of October um, the index and actually not only reaching but also overshooting it a little by a little bit it um, reversed back up and uh, pushed nicely to the upside of course um, the news come came out um, about China cutting its um, uh, its lending rate uh, for corporate and household loans so for it's kind of for the second straight month so that they're doing that and of course that the market the market sees that as a um, as a nice boost, um, be, yeah, which could increase uh, lending, of course, yes, and um, borrowing, um, and uh, yeah, um, let's see, let's see if that's going to help out the economy, or is it is this going to be just a let's say a temporary measure, or um, will the market take that as a um, just a, like a, a temporary short term positivity here uh, in order not to fall off the cliff? I mean, straight away. So um, for now, yes, um, everything's looking quite interesting. Of course, yes, the fact that yeah they they've cut the rate that's giving a slight boost here to the economy. How, for how long will that be? That's another question. So, um, because of course, as we understand that investors are also um, kind of uh, keeping close eye on the Fed, which is kind of uh, thinking of, you know, uh, increasing rates, uh, you know, coming closer to March, maybe something like that. So, but again, and that might uh, play out negatively on the, um, on the economy. However, coming back to the technicals here, um, looking at this picture, yes, the fact that it, um, the fact that it it pushed nicely, uh, pushed nicely to the upside, that's good. That's great news for the buyers. I mean, temporarily because. What we could see here, for example, is a push further, uh, push further north here. But if this um, this ups, uh, this upside line, this uh, lower side of the uh, of the triangle holds, then well, another slide might be uh, might be possible. So. <clears throat> Long story short, uh, yes, even if it pushes a little bit higher. Oh, and by the way, look at how well this level played out, this 27,889 zone. 
boom there we go perfect little resistance so what can i say is that if we stay somewhere below it or even like i said the last resort is below this uh, the lower side of the triangle then maybe another slide like this could be uh could be possible so keep that in mind uh for the upside i would need to see this one climbing back up here and maybe also just i don't know how significant this would could be but maybe a push up of this downside line here could do the trick here for more buyers. So in other words, maybe I would actually keep an eye on this 28,445 level right here um, in order to get a little bit more excited with uh, the upside. So yeah, all this area for me uh, in between the, the, the lines here would be a bit on the, um, on the neutral side. So uh, Shanghai Composite, of course, yes, um, um, having a bit of a boost, not significant. I mean, Nikkei, I think, enjoyed the moment a little bit more than, than Shanghai Composite. Um, of course, investors remain still cautious, um, but the fact that it continues to trade above this upside line, that, that that's a little looks a little bit more reassuring than Nikkei. Um, so again, uh, of course, we'll just have to continue monitoring the situation. This uh, short term, like I said, uh, kind of positive activity effect here um, is playing out nicely so far on Shanghai Composite, but will it, can it, or say, uh, will it allow the market to push here uh, back to the upside nicely? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, and as I said before, I would prefer actually to wait for a break of this downside line taken from the high of the 13th of December um, in order to go for some higher levels. And uh, then also uh, I would like to see maybe a push above somewhere above this 3,600 level in order to uh, get comfortable with, like I said, with the upside. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of uh, ifs and buts here but um, yeah unfortunately that's the game plan and, and unfortunately we are stuck in this in this territory which is a little bit unclear uh, so we just have to kind of go from what we have and uh, uh, for the downside for example I need to see uh, not only a break of this a break back below this upside line but also a drop below the 200 day EMA so yeah and then we would have another obstacle on the way lower so this this lowest point the current lowest point of January near the 3519 zone so in other words I mean there's a lot of obstacles on the way lower as well. So I, again, the, you know, if you do like to trade such 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 <laughs> such uh, scenarios here, be my guest, of course. But the only thing is that uh, keep in mind that we might have some choppiness here, and uh, a stop loss is much much needed. Uh, the German index, DAX. So um, good reversal, strong reversal yesterday. Look at this, boom, nice push higher. I mean, although it looks quite strong here, but actually it didn't really gain much because um, initially it opened up nicely with a gap uh, lower. And uh, look at this, I mean, it filled the gap. And not only that, it managed to, from around uh, 15,640 zone, traveled all the way back to the 15,900, I mean, that's quite a good, good jump here. So yeah, about 360, 350 points. Um, yeah, that's correct. Yes. Um, yeah, no, sorry, 200 uh, from around, yes, uh, 15, yeah, 250, 260 points. So, so yeah, um, very good. Very good move here in a day. Um, if you managed to catch this, congratulations. That's yeah, quite an achievement. Um, but coming back to the kind of uh, to the picture, the at least the short term picture. Yes, uh, we managed to get that rebound, but can we get that um, hold up? Can we get that hold up near this downside line? Well, that's going to be quite an interesting one to see. Um, if that downside line gets broken, so obviously, I mean, we could start looking at some higher levels. The um, the only thing that I'm kind of uh, keeping an eye on here is, of course, the uh, today's positivity. I mean, how will that uh, today's pos today's positivity in the sh in the Asian markets? How will that roll into uh, the European and the U.S. ones? I mean, maybe we could see a bit of a you know, and a, a bit of a lift here, so it could be a good push. Uh, higher uh, could give the indices, uh, the European and the US indices, a, a bit of a push higher because right now the cash index is sitting at around 15,846 levels, so uh, slightly above where it closed yesterday. Um, <clears throat> So slightly above it, so somewhere around uh, here, near that 21-day EMA, actually. Um, so just slightly below it. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things to consider, although 
it's it's looking maybe a little bit more on the positive side but um, yeah we do have this downside line guys if, if it continues to hold another slide could be possible so so yeah that's uh, that's why let's see how this is gonna play out for now for now I'm um, I'm cautiously bearish I would say but um, if again it's very tricky here because again if, if it gets closer to this downside line and starts breaking it uh, maybe just maybe we could see this one as a maybe as a possible um, um, uh, falling veg here again uh, something that I don't really want to put too much in your heads but um, something like uh, this so let me just adjust this a little bit so something like this maybe this could be seen as a as a as a you know as a falling veg again um let's see i mean if this is a falling veg then uh then yes it could break out to the upside i mean according to all the ta rules so that's why be very careful i mean at the moment it's uh yeah, there's a lot of temptation here don't get me wrong i mean there's a lot of temptation especially for the bulls um the sellers could still be tempted here because again we we could and until we are stuck in this let's say if if, if it is this pattern um if we're stuck until we're stuck in here i mean then it could just continue drifting lower so i've talked about this i think with um shanghai composite previously um or i think something else uh, i can't remember but the, I think there was something there where I picked up on this, but like I said, as long as it stays inside the pattern, it could still drift lower. But if it breaks the upper side here or the, or the so-called downside line this here, then yes, we could start looking at some higher levels. So that's why be very careful. Again, um, we are at an at an interesting spot. So um, yeah, have your stop loss in place. S and P 500. So um, this one. Um, Look at this. I mean, beautiful move lower. Yesterday we pushed a little bit higher here, tested the the uh, the area slightly above the 100 day EMA. Excuse me, um, and tested these uh, these upside lines, um, or to be more precise, actually not this and these, but this upside line uh, taken from the low of the third uh, of December. Um, what I said before to you in my yesterday's video that if this area can somehow provides resistance, then another slide could be possible. And boom, there we got we got that resistance, and we got that slide. Uh, we got a nice hold up near the 4,531 level. It's, this was my next target. Um, after that, after if we do break below this hurdle, my next target is the lowest point of December near the uh, near the 4,495 zone right here, roughly uh, roughly around here. Here. Um, the cash index is currently rebounding. Uh, we are sitting at around 4,554 levels, so we're back somewhere around here. Um, again, the same story. If the index continues to trade, let's say, below the 100 day EMA or below the, these upside lines, then, yep, another slide could be possible. However, at this point, given that we have rebounded, I would actually prefer now to wait for a drop below the 4,531 territory in order to go for lower levels because this would confirm a forthcoming lower low. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. So uh, here also a nice beautiful move to the downside. Um, in general yesterday uh, in terms of the uh, US um, US market, um, the the main gainers were the basic materials and consumer defensive and utilities in that order. Initially, the market kind of initially the trading day yesterday started off that uh, technology was kind of leading the way. I mean, after declining heavily the previous session, um, it then yep popped nicely to the upside. However, it failed to hold its positions and well I mean it declined heavily so we saw a lot of um, we saw a lot of uh, technology technological stocks kind of drifting nicely to the downside um, so let's see how it's gonna play out today again I'm, I'm mentioning the same thing that if um, if the uh, this this China positivity this uh, the cutting the cutting of the rate uh, will kind of spill into the U.S. session today because again let's not let let's not forget that uh, U.S. depends a lot on you know Chinese uh, on the Chinese manufacturing um, and uh, yeah so let's see how that's gonna play out. Um, if I mean we might get those little boosts, little, little kind of recoveries, um, but again, overall for now the kind of the the way we're seeing 
this picture i mean it's we're still kind of leading a little leaning a little bit more towards the downside especially if the price continues to trade below the 100 day ema uh, dxy the dollar index so um Looking at this picture here, uh, we have declined a little bit, so the 21-day EMA provided good resistance. However, the 95.52 level is providing good support, so we're basically stuck. We're stuck also between the two lines here, so um, I'm not going to say anything right now, but um, again, I'll stick to the same rule. I mean, I need to see a break, a clear break again through one of these lines. Uh, I do understand we, we violated this area right here, this, uh, this upside line, uh, back last week um, but if we do again drop below this then yep maybe we could uh, get a little bit more comfortable with the downside again so keep that in mind uh, gold uh, gold beautiful beautiful move and if you remember guys yesterday morning I talked about this being a possible bullish flag and boom there we go I mean that confirmed it and uh, yes uh, we pushed nicely to the upside uh, we cleared some of the levels here and most importantly we jumped above that area that I talked about this 18 29 31 levels uh, between the, those 18 uh, 29 and 31 levels we cleared that area and uh, we stayed above it so that's great news that's great news here and uh, yeah um, for now I would say um, Everything's looking quite positive still here on gold, and as long as it stays above this 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 area that I mentioned, um, yes, we'll continue aiming higher, but only up until this downside line taken from the high of the first of June of 2021, and then we'll take it from there. For the downside, I would need to see a, a move back down below this area, below that 80 1829 zone, uh, and I would like to see it staying below it in order to, like I said, uh, aim for slightly lower levels. Uh, WTI oil very quickly on this one. Okay. Now this is very getting very interesting. Um, so yesterday, beautiful push here, higher. Look at this. I mean, but then by the end of the day, trading session kind of declined a little bit and moved lower. And today we've opened kind of uh, opened with a gap to the downside. However, we filled that gap already. Now my only question is, will this be a nice uh, shooting star here? Basically, a nice reversal signal. Again, um, let's see, like I said, let's let's wait, uh, let's wait and see, but if you're looking for some downside, at least wait for a move below this steep upside line, and then, yes, we could maybe consider a bit of a move to the downside here, maybe a bit of a nice correction. However, um, let's not rush into anything. First, let's see uh, how this is going to play out, and previously when I talked about this being possible range, um, I do have another idea, but uh, for now I just need some maybe more confirmation and uh, uh, I want to see if this is not going to end up being maybe like a rising channel actually slightly with a slight incline here. I mean we have, um, this is where me trying to find maybe something where there's not, so uh, I do apologize for that guys. Um, uh, let's see if this is going to be like the case, so I mean it's not an ideal one, but uh, could be, could be. Um, so yeah, there we go. So something like this, uh, maybe, maybe. Um, let's, like I said, let's continue monitoring this. I mean, I'll keep that on the chart for now. I mean, like I said, uh, remember that uh, maybe this could end up being a rising channel, but uh, we will ignore and scrap all that I all this uh, this whole idea if we push above yesterday's high and uh, yesterday's high is roughly around let me just grab a line um, that's roughly around 87.90 level so a nice good pop above it yep good open the door to its higher levels um, Bitcoin very quickly on that one so um, <clears throat> so the 41,634 level continues to provide support, as I've mentioned before in my previous videos, um, and especially in my yesterday's yesterday's video. So yeah, I mean, so far so good. Um, so far so good. So um, let's see if the bulls can pick up on this crypto from around here and then push it higher. I'm not rushing into anything yet because again, this picture here is from the technical side. It's very bearish because um, on one hand, we could see uh, maybe a, a descending triangle forming here. If we 
draw some lines correctly but for now I'm just keeping this downside line uh, just to see how all this is gonna play out um, if um, if we drop below the 41,634 level right here this could may attract a few more sellers we could see this one drifting lower and then we'll aim for the current lowest point of January near the 39,673 level and but if that gets broken certainly and so on and so on we could be aiming for lower levels but again the fact that right now that this level the lowest point of December is kind of playing out nicely so far that is um, that is quite a, uh, a it could be a good sign here however either way um, for me to get comfortable with the upside I would prefer to see actually not only a break of this downside line but also a push above the 4,000 oh sorry 44,445 level right here uh, AUD and ZD jumping into a few pairs boom guys AUD and ZD popped nicely to the upside and I talked a lot about this pair and it's one of my favorite ones and uh, yeah there we go it's uh, it's, it's very technical or at least has been so far I mean maybe it'll change in the future I mean who knows and a lot of things change in the future so um, you you know you, th you think one way and then actually and it ends up uh, kind of uh, disappointing you a lot but for now um, AUD and ZD is not really disappointing me a lot so <laughs> so that's why I mean I'm seeing this as a nice good win and uh, 1.0650 level I talked about this level and it we managed to clearly break it nicely and uh, we're so far staying above it now if we continue to trade above it that's good uh, because we'll we could aim for then for some higher levels like the 1.0740 let's round it up here a little bit uh, that's the high of the uh, 13th of July and so on and so on we could then maybe target some of the other levels like for example here the highest point of June near the 1.08 uh, 12 13 zone approximately around there but Either way, guys, for now, uh, looking at this, I mean, uh, everything's looking quite positive. Of course, the positivity in in AUD came in today uh, due to good numbers from Australia um, and uh, the good em employment numbers from Australia. So I think that, uh, let me just quickly double check that. Um, so yeah, we had a good number in employment change. Um, pos yeah, positive number in employment change. No, sorry, not positive. Well, d just a g much better than the forecast. Uh, however, uh, worse than the much worse than the previous number. But nevertheless, uh, I mean, the market is taking that positively. Mm, the unemployment rate improved. So the previous one was 4.6. The forecast was 4.5. Uh, the actual was 4.2. So very good achievement uh, here in general uh, every, the economy the Australian economy looks quite uh, good uh, the labor uh, the labor market is looks quite good so yeah uh, and just kind of this whole uh, these all these numbers kind of just gave a nice boost here to the Australian dollar and look at this I mean pushed nicely to the upside here um, so as, as I said for now as long as it stays above this 1.0650 level I'll continue aiming higher uh, AUD USD quick update on this one this one was a a little bit um, yes it was positive but not as positive as AUD and ZD um, the only concern here is the fact that we are getting a slight hold up near this 0 0.7230 zone so um, yeah we did push above it initially but we're now back below it so that's where my kind of uh, concern is a little bit so however it's just uh, still the beginning of the day here in Europe so um, let's see if we can actually push above this area again um, and if we can then yep I'll continue aiming higher but so far this idea that I mentioned here is working out uh, with the arrow drawn here uh, AD CAD now this one's a little bit difficult because although yes beautiful positivity coming in into Australian dollar however um, let's keep an eye on the oil market because initially when I said that if oil continues to rise then yep Canadian dollar could strengthen here and we could see it drift lower but this area look at this I mean I've also meant what I mentioned yesterday was that well, I don't want to rush into anything but again Let's see if this is not going to end up being maybe like a double bottom here, but um, for, for that, of course, we need to see a lot of things happening. Uh, like, for example, uh, one thing for sure, we need we need to see a, a push above this barrier right here, the 0 0.93 zone, in order to get a little bit more comfortable with um, with that idea of a, um, of a double bottom here. Um, or even uh, let's say uh, we I think that for the double bottom maybe let me just see if this is gonna work out um, okay somewhat 
Um, so yeah, this downside line also is something to watch here. Um, so basically, I knew I do understand we were missing out on a lot of territory here, but that would be the kind of ideal scenario for that double, uh, double bottom. Uh, for now, from the shorter term perspective, I'm keeping an eye on this downside line right here uh, to see if 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 it's going to play out nicely. So yeah, uh, for now, like I said, for now, uh, that's the game plan. If we break this downside line, then I'll aim for the upside. Um, and the fact that also if oil suddenly declines, uh, then yes, this could give a boost to this pair and we could see mm, a nice push uh, to the upside and then we'll take it from there. Uh, quick update on USD JPY. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of these lines because no longer needed. Uh, it, I'm just going to actually, I'm just going to keep an eye on this downside line because so far something is kind of telling me that um, it's kind of playing out nicely here. But the fact that the 114.26 level, the one that I talked about yesterday and, and actually the, the day before that, um, I, I said that keep your eyes on it because that's the inside swing high of the 14th of January and somehow it is providing good support for now. Um, if it gets broken again, yep, we could see a move, nice move to the downside. But if the... Um, excuse me, um, if the um, indices start recovering uh, sharply, then, well, USD JPY could push higher. However, even then, I would need to see a push above the 115 territory, 115.07, uh, somewhere around here, in order to get a little bit more comfortable with the upside. Uh, USD CAD, also interesting developments here. Um, again, like I said, a lot will depend on oil today, um, because if oil uh, kind of drifts a little bit lower, then uh, yes, we could see actually maybe another false breakout here on below this 1.2493 level, um, and then we could see a nice reversal and a push back to the upside. However, if oil continues to accelerate, well, I mean, we could see this pair continuing to drift lower. Uh, now, US dollar against the Turkish lira, something that I've picked up previously a while ago and I just wanted to quickly see where we are at um, after we had this craziness in um, in November in December basically and yeah um, you can see that uh, this year uh, we have managed to recover uh, the losses that were done in uh, at the end, kind of the second half of December here, you can see this sharp fall and uh, yep, um, a nice good drop lower. Uh, talk about of uh, talk about speculation here. I mean, uh, that's I mean that's quite interesting to, to watch. Don't get me wrong, um, but either way, um, yeah. Uh, so far, it's um, it has recovered and uh, recovered around. Um, not a full 50%, so it's kind of currently balancing around the 38.2% retracement on the Fibonacci. Um, let's, I, I think that it's time to get rid of this Fibonacci, actually, um, now the main thing, I'm keeping an eye on this 21-day EMA, which is certainly providing good support. Um, another thing that uh, you could consider from the very short-term perspective is maybe a possible kind of uh, squeeze here. So, possible triangle pattern, uh, which is playing out so far, and uh, yeah, um, Again, we're waiting for a clear break, and if we kind of go uh, go with the uh, textbook kind of uh, theory, then of course the prevailing trend before entering the squeeze, this triangle, it was to the upside, the prevailing trend. Uh, but so that means that it could uh, break out to the upside. However, um, from my side personally, I would like to see some other confirmation here before um, aiming higher. And the confirmation would be a push above this area right here, roughly around that 13.93 zone and then I could go for the upside. At the moment, for me, this is just um, some observation, uh, uh, an observation instrument, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep an eye on that one. For the downside, I would need to see maybe a drop somewhere below this hurdle, is 13.13 level, and then yeah, we could go from there. Uh, GBP USD, very quickly on this, so quick update. I mean, it, GBP and USD and Euro USD are gonna be very quick updates here, but um, this pair looks a little bit more positive than the euro dollar, for example, that I talked about. But um, I, I talked about this idea. I said, said that if this area holds, then, well, we could maybe see a drift back towards that 200 EMA or this downside line. So we, which we managed to do, we managed to 
managed to get. Um, can we get that rebound? Now, uh, so far we are getting that rebound. So can we get a stronger rebound? Now that's another question. I mean, for me, uh, looking at this picture, yes, I'll slowly aim higher, but uh, very, 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 very cautiously because again, I'll have a very uh, tight stop loss after all the way here, uh, just in case, because it could reverse very sharply to the downside here. And uh, yeah, we could see this pair maybe drifting maybe further alongside this downside line that we've seen that happening uh, many times in other instruments uh, so yeah uh, it could continue drifting let's say sliding alongside this downside line and then maybe rebound and push higher so let's see how this is going to play out for now let's not over uh if you're not really comfortable right now with anything here then <clears throat> the suggestion is to wait for that push back above the 1.37 territory at least and then we could go slowly on uh, in, around there um yeah, your USD. Um, this one still, I mean, yeah, we had a nice little rebound here. That's fine, but the fact that we're still stuck, we're back, we're stuck, but we're back in this, in between these two lines, we're stuck there. And so, yeah, we need to see some sort of uh, confirmation breaks here. And uh, for the upside, I would need to see maybe a push. Uh, above this uh, 1.1383 territory again I, I would prefer that actually and then yeah we could go uh, we could go for some higher levels maybe again so there's a lot of maybes on on euro usd to be honest i mean at the moment i will just continue monitoring this but of course uh, the more convenient level for me for the upside now is this one the uh the, the highest point of january near the 1.1483 however um i don't want to miss out here's about 100 pips um, that we could be missing out so I'll, I would say let's say if we do pop, pop above the 1.1383 I'll go I'll aim for some higher levels but I'll have a very tight stop loss uh, as well um, so yeah for the downside I need to see a break of this upside line taken from the low the 24th of November and then we could take it from there so yeah that, that's it guys um, I hope you found it useful Thank you very much for watching and listening. Thank you very much for kind of tuning in uh, into this recorded session. <laughs> so yeah, um, hopefully, like I said, next week I will be able to run these uh, live, but we'll see. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you very much, guys. Have a wonderful trading day. Stay safe. Have your stop losses in place and everything will be fine. Thank you very much and bye-bye.